the standard of care is a legal term to keep us out of the courtroom, the health care provider. They will never make the standard of care optimal care. They're not going to hold our feet to that type of fire where we're expected to reach optimal goals with our patients. The standard of care is really like a C in school. In school, it will work to get you a diploma. In this business of heart attack, stroke, diabetes prevention, a C can get you in big trouble. Coming straight out of residency, I would have liked to have thought that I was on the cutting edge of the newest knowledge, um, you know, the recent publications and studies um, and recommendations for cholesterol, um, et cetera. But coming here, I found out that, I, I, I honestly, I feel a little bit robbed <laughs> that I really, w I'm definitely not on the cutting edge. And a lot of this was new to me. Some people come in and they say, you know, I just got through with residency or I've just been doing practice for the last 30 years in this format. And that's two paradigms of the, of the, continuum, if you will, somebody brand new into medicine who spent the last eight years in school who comes in and says, my gosh, this is the, well, this is what I've been searching for and this gives me really an opportunity to make a difference and, and really is a format and roadmap to know how to do that. I've tried the practice way for 30 years in, in the areas that I've been involved in, but to see them get out and reach people and teach and have this wonderful program. I think is spectacular because now they're going out and teaching physicians and other teachers and practitioners exactly what they should be thinking and how they should approach these diseases. I've been doing this for a decade <clears throat> and my hope is that through our course we'll train enough providers to totally take away heart attacks and strokes as the leading cause of death and the leading cause of disability in this country. Type 2 diabetes is the fastest growing disease in this country, in all developing countries, and people who go through our course will be adequately trained to recognize who those individuals are. And then we also deliver in our course the management that needs to take place to prevent them from going on to type 2 diabetes. Our method is dynamic, so as new literature, as new good evidence rolls, rolls into the world of science, and uh, peer-reviewed journals would suggest that, that certain elements are, are trackable, tangible, we directly apply, apply that to the clinical setting. You have to do better than most of, of what the national society suggests, whether it's insulin resistance or whether it's blood pressure or proteinuria, it's very important because modifying these risk factors by the, the current standards of care are not good enough, almost always. We have to do better and we can make our patients better. So the first thing you have to do is recognize a lot of your patients have subclinical atherosclerosis, arterial disease, which will not be adequately recognized by looking at risk factors, and that over half of the patients you have are actually on the road to diabetes, and without going through our course, you won't realize the testing that needs to be done for you to be aware of that. Once you're aware of it, there are lots of different things you can do to turn those risks around.